want to start with um, this question. They said, how do we mitigate not wanting to believe uh, in the supernatural meanings, witchcraft and sorcery, mm-hmm. and the supernatural acts of Jesus' miracles? Sometimes right. it's hard for me to disconnect the two. Yeah. Um, again, great question. Um, I don't think it's an, ad- it, it's an issue of believing in, you know, um, demonic activity or spiritual warfare. I believe in it. Yeah. I don't participate in it. So sure. that's the difference. Yeah. And, you know, the scripture talks about, you know, anybody who, you know, who refuses Jesus as the Lord and Savior, you know, that spirit. Um, and again, I'm paraphrasing, you know, it, 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 it won't be of God, of Jesus. Mm-hmm. So there's some very clear delineations between like, that's right. of God, that's not. Right. But here's what I would say is, um, so God has chosen, you know, in, in terms of how he, uh, how he operates, um, I believe to, to, to use the gifts, to, there's this spiritual warfare that Paul talks about. Um, so this is all going on. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's real, it's out there. And I always love the C.S. Lewis quote that says the, the two, you know, it's from the Wormwood, um, you know, screw tape letters, all yeah. this. But he says the two, ex- the, the, the two extremes, the devil, um, Wormwood, is, is working towards um, is either that we are over enamored with, you know, spirituality yeah. or completely dismissive of it. Right. Either way, you're kind of in the ditch. Yeah. And so um, what I would say is this. Um, Anything of spiritual warfare, anything the enemy does, is only a copy and a counterfeit of something that God does. Yeah. Um, because the enemy has no creative ability. So he's not out there coming up with creative miracles. So if I were to say there's the there's the you know the office of the prophet or the prophetic gifting, then the counterfeit to that would be the psychic. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if you were to go through all of the 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 spiritual gifts that you see, the you know, um, you would see, and, and you would see a counterfeit of it. Yeah. And of course, that is to draw you or to confuse you or to lure people away. Because what? Because the enemy offers you all this supernatural power, seemingly without any, you know, requirement or expectation around it. Right. Whereas with God, you know, they are gifts, but like your your Christian ethic, the way you live, yeah. um, is going to play into that. Um, it's to give God glory, not give you glory. So you have to be a humble person. You have yeah. to, you know what I mean? And people have messed this up for sure. But, but then on the, on the, you know, let's call it the other side of this, the demonic side of it, um, it's self-centered, self-focused, self-aggrandizing, you know, and right. so it has a different motive. So, you know, worship, um, which is not necessarily a spiritual gift, you know, music, music is very much created by God. Right you know, for the purpose of, of worshiping God. And, and there is, I'm not going to get too whole deep, but there's amoral stuff. Yeah. I could sing happy birthday. That's not good or bad. It's yeah. just amoral. But the highest level would be like worship unto God, presence, seeking God's presence. And then on the flip side, there's a very, you know, demonic, culturally destructive, yeah. sexually perverse music that is um, focused on flesh and people and even some of it demonically inspired. So the thing is, same gift, counterfeit used for the wrong purposes. Yeah. So I think, you know, the way we just have to kind of navigate to answer the question is, you know, Scripture tells us to desire spiritual gifts. Yeah. So it's not where it's like, I'm just going to throw it all out, which is what some people have done. And yeah. just like, I don't want to deal with any of it, so I'm just going to throw it all out and it just doesn't matter. So then you end up with a, a Bible that is a rule book without any power to live. You yeah. know what I mean? Because the Holy Spirit has been removed <laughs> yeah. from daily activity in your life. Um, and there's a lot, lot of activity, not just spiritual gifts. He convicts, he leads, he guides, he comforts, all those things. But the other, the other aspect of it is, is just, you know, but here's the beauty. You have the Holy Spirit in you to give you discernment. You have the word, you have other believers, you know, that we're right. in community, we're walking this together, that are used to discern, like, what is, you know, biblical, spiritual, yeah. supernatural giftings and what is not. Yeah. And, and so I think that's just, it's a tension we live in. Yeah. Um, if you want to dismiss it, you have to dis- dismiss the whole thing. Yeah. Um, but what I recognize is that, is that Jesus came um, to destroy the works of the devil. Yeah. Um, I recognize that Jesus performed these miracle signs and wonders, and he said, greater things than me will you do because of me. Um, and so it's part of the believer's, you yeah. know, sort of position to operate and walk in this. 
Um, and again, you know, we're human beings. And so right. we goof it up and people goof it up. And then everybody wants to, you know, pile on this one person who's weird and mm-hmm. blows on people's slings jackets and all this. And, and I'm just like, you just have to, you know, you have to get past some of that stuff um, to get to the true authentic, you know, portions of it at time. Yeah, because even in our gifts, our humanity is wrapped up Absolutely. in the use of Absolutely. Them. Yeah, and, and, and I'm thankful God doesn't, you know, um, remove our personalities and mm-hmm. our, you know, because he wants to work with us, not robots. And so uh, with that, there's always going to be the possibility of failure and abuse right. and misuse. And I mean, all the way back to like the beginning of, you know, I wouldn't say the beginning of, but the the, the 19th century yeah. out, outpouring into Zusa and and things of that nature. I mean, there was, there's always just going to be stuff. Yeah. And that's why I think God places community and spiritual leadership to address that stuff yeah. and help us stay, you know, stay focused on the good that comes. Right. Because all throughout scripture, when the disciples were used of God in these miraculous things, the whole city was like, mm-hmm. you know, tell us about this God. Tell, right. I mean, we are what, this is, this is amazing. And so it's used as a sign to point people towards God. It feels like too, in that answer, it's not necessarily... When it comes to supernatural, is it real or not? It's is it God? Yeah, or not? God? Exactly. You know. Yeah, I mean, when we say, I think there can be the human, sure, c- contrived portion of it, yeah. fake. You know, I mean, earpiece and you know, in your yeah. ear. Um, but but I would say that's more. I would say the strong statement that's more demonic than God. Yeah. Because it's out of deception. Right. So that's gonna. There's always gonna be cues that go like, ah, right. that's not. God doesn't do deception. God right. doesn't do. You know, that sort of stuff. There's a way that God does, and that's why he gives us a word to see it. So we walk that out. Okay, next question. We had a few along these lines. Um, I'm going to ask it the way I remember it. Because, okay, this person said, I want to know everything about everything and understand everything. <laughs> <laughs> Very honest statement. I love it. But there's some questions in there along the lines of, yeah. you know, if I just had a yes or no, I could move on with my life. Yeah, But sure. I feel like I haven't heard anything, and I want to know. Yeah, I think here's the thing. I mean, I, th- when I hear that, I go to Solomon, it goes... Pursuing it all, you know, vanity on vanity, yeah. you know, it all is nothing. I got it all, and it still wasn't everything. Yep. And so I think that's part of the human condition is we just want to settle it all, figure it all out. We don't want tension. We don't want strife. But I think that's where it's important that we lean into um, he will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are stayed upon him. So if the condition is disruption and control and all that, we stay focused on Jesus, and that gives us yeah. peace in what we don't know. Yeah. Because uh, I don't know everything, but... Um, I trust that the things I need to know, he'll make sure that I know. The The other part of it is, you know, um, I think I go to the New Testament and it talks about, Paul talks about in different places where people have wandered from the faith, mm. pursuing these, you know, popular ideas and, and non-essential, like, th- so this is nothing new that people right. are just always pursuing the the conspiracy theory of the day. I mean, maybe they didn't call them that, sure. and maybe they weren't conspiracies, but you get what I'm saying. It's yeah. like the, the the idea, oh, everybody's looking for the silver bullet to make everything, right. and what they're longing for is eternity with God. <laughs> you know, peace, full awareness, full knowledge, being known as you're known. Yep. That's the eternity echoing in a person's heart. Yeah. So we live in this fallen world. you got to stay at it and stay close to the Holy Spirit, stay in the Word of God, but um, even if you get it all, you'd still would not have it all. I do think you mentioned, you know, Ecclesiastes. I think it's a great read if you're in that place of like, for sure, wanting everything. For sure, like just read Ecclesiastes and yeah. He, well, because it shows you. you I mean, know. Solomon, who basically had right. anything he wanted, is just like, man, what I found out is like, you work all day and it amounts to what, and you make it all, and you give it to your kids, and they blow it, and and I don't think it's like he's not saying don't do it. He's right. just like, just realize, put this in proper perspective and right. place. And don't be consumed by this thing. And, yeah. and um, you know, like an old man sitting around telling you, Ecclesiastes is actually written to the preacher. Mm. And it's like it's like the preacher preaching to us. It's like a guy still there going like, let me tell you some things I've learned along the way. Yeah. And so we should learn from that for sure. Um, okay. Another question. Is it our response that moves God yeah. or God's sovereignty? I love that. That is such a good question because that is a wrestling match and a tension that people have. And here's what I would say. Um, ultimately, God is sovereign, meaning he is all knowing control. It is yeah. God. He is sovereign. God is will do what he. Nobody controls God. Nobody ma- yeah. manipulates God. But at the same time, um, God has sovereignly relegated Himself to respond to prayer. We see that. Yeah. Um, and so, um, and I can give you the example of of you know Moses, um, Abraham, these major men of faith in the Old Testament that God says, "I'm going to 
I'm going to destroy Sodom. I'm going to wipe out the Israelites. Yeah. And in both instances, they stepped in and said, God, one of them is even like a negotiation. God, mm -hmm. if I find 50, you know, Abraham, 40, 30, 20, 10, if you can find 10. So God is willing, even though he, it doesn't remove his sovereignty. We're not right. manipulating him. He just says, I want to respond. I want to partner with you with humankind. Yeah. So I'm looking for those who would stand in the gap, yeah. in the breach of righteousness, to stand in that gap and intercede, to enter, to, to, to the word is paga, and there's several different meanings of it, but some of it means like to set up a meeting, to mm. stand between, to mediate, like a lawyer. Yeah. So yes, God is sovereign. And I don't mean to say that simply by you know worshiping and falling down, you get what you want, but it's about posturing our heart to align ourselves with God mm. and stay in faith while we're waiting. Yeah. But God does respond to the cries. Right. We see it in Israel. Right. You actually see it in, in Sodom as well. Like people don't think that, but he's like, it's I'm not just judging because I want to judge. He's like, the cry has the cry of the oppressed has come before me. Yeah. And and I'm gonna step in now and bring this judgment. And in, in all those instances, somebody stepped in, prayed, interceded, yeah. talked to God. And, and stayed the hand of God. I mean, Moses, he was like, Moses, I'm going to wipe them all out. I'll start over with you. Mm -hmm. He's like, wait, 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 God. You know, like the whole nations are going to look at this and see that you weren't able to bring them into their, their possession. Yeah. And it wasn't like God was like, oh, yeah, I remember. He, he, he hadn't forgotten that. Yeah. But in his sovereignty, he's relegated himself to the realm of, of prayer and partnership at times. So I, I think it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's both, but we don't manipulate God. Right. Um, but just the, the, the danger of saying, well, God's just sovereign is like, we just throw up our hands right? and, and, and there's a, there's a yeah. whole belief thought process behind that, that tends to go into thoughts of predestination right. and election and things like that. And so, man, what do I, I just, Hey, I don't need to do anything. It is what it is. And so we are removed from the responsibility right. of being a disciple and a follower of Jesus, which yeah. includes being a witness. Um, and so you, again, that's you taking that's taking it to an extreme, and that's where people go though with it at times. Either way, yeah, you know. And so, um, it's a great question, but there is a tension. But yeah. here's what I would say, you know, God is sovereign, um, but He choose He does respond to the cries of people's hearts. Yeah. And so, where where do I want to land in this? You know. So yeah. I'm going to be the person. I'm going to be the Mary that, you know, falls down, worships, cries out to God, and says, God, if you'd have been here and. You know, there was a there was a heart's cry from her, not just an intellectual conversation to understand. Right, um, and it moved Jesus. It was also the will of God, obviously. Right. right. So there's the key. I yeah. mean, that's that. As I've said so many times before, he was doing what his father had told him through the Holy Spirit to do. Right. So, and okay, in that picture of Mary and Martha mm -hmm. and falling at Jesus's feet, yep. we have this question. Um, sh so, should we be Mary or Martha when it comes to timing? Should we be a little bit of both? Both. Yeah. Should we have the conversation and cry both. out to God? You know? I think both. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I think I think both of them. I don't mean to demonize either one of them or to diminish either one of them because, I mean, you know, we, let's go back to other stories of Mary and Martha. You know, Mary is sitting at Jesus' feet. Martha's, mm -hmm. Martha's working her tail off to, to provide hospitality. Hospitality in the culture in the day was a massive part of of your honor code. And we don't understand this. So we don't live in an honor-shame society in America. Yeah. Some, some places, if you go into Asia... Um, Africa, different places, even some of South America, there's a strong uh, shame, honor, yeah. you know, like honor the, the matriarch, the patriarch. Right. The, so for Martha to not provide food for Jesus and his disciples when they were there would have been mm. offensive. Yeah. So it was, she wasn't doing something wrong. And everybody makes her out like, oh, she's just working so hard. And here's Mary just falling at Jesus' feet. Yeah. Um, and, but both of them are necessary. Yeah. And I think what, what Jesus says to her he doesn't. He doesn't rebuke Martha from doing what she's doing, right? But he says, "Mary, I'm not going to take this. She is. She's found the more important thing right now. Yeah. And I would say the key is right now. Yeah. Like I'm here for a limited amount of time. Yeah, that's good. Um, and she's sitting at my feet. By the way, as a disciple, because that was the position of a disciple was sitting at the feet of the rabbi. So this is not just lounging around the house listening to Jesus. Mm -hmm. She had, as a woman, which was not allowed um, in the culture of the day to be a disciple. She was. She was positioned as a disciple at the feet of Jesus, learning from him. Yeah. So I think it's both. Yeah. I think it's, a, but it's being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. What, what is God calling me to right now in this moment? And that would be my follow-up question: Is how do we grow in discernment of knowing what's needed and in, in the moment that we're in? 
Yeah, I think it's a little about like growing to hear God's voice, and that is um, you grow in it by by you know hearing and responding and seeing the result of that. Yeah, and I, I, I like any other voice you learn, it's by practice. Yeah, and and I think you know um, you know I, I once I once sat with a guy that was pretty profound in his prophetic gifting and. Um, I mean, I, I saw him come into rooms in churches that he had no idea yeah. and just pull people out of and just, I'm not talking like, you know, God has a plan for you. I'm talking like I'm praying for a daughter and two sons. Mm. And most people didn't even know this lady had a second son because he was much older from a first marriage and we were close enough. I knew and like he's naming kids. And wow. I mean, like it wasn't like, yeah. and this is an obscure, there was no internet. So he couldn't be like, I'm looking on Facebook to find everybody. Like, and, and I asked him one time, I was like, how did you get to this place? And here's what he told me. He said, you know what? When I started out, I was hungry for uh, you know, spiritual gifts. And so, of course, I'm assuming all of the Christian ethic things are there. You know, I'm seeking God. I'm in his word. I'm in community. All the things God calls us to do as a part of being a believer first. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just assuming that first for as I talk like this. So don't, mm-hmm. nobody needs to say, well, what about, what about, I'm like, I'm assuming a lot of that. Right. But if you're there... And he's like, okay, Lord, I want to be used, and I'm willing to be used. Yeah. He said for him, it started out God would just show him like really stupid, I shouldn't say stupid, silly, non-issue type things to to sort of approach, mm. and um and he would then he would then like yeah. you've got a cold, and they'd be like, I do, you know. So now he's like, okay, that was the Lord. Yeah. Okay, that was the Lord, and so he just became more and more familiar. He mm. said then as time went on. The intensity of those things went up to where it was like you're either right or wrong here. This yeah. is no longer like, <laughs> you know, you're married. I can see the ring on your finger. You yeah, know what right. I mean? I mean, it was legit, but it, it got more intense to where he was talking like, I'm calling out this guy mm. for having an affair with that woman in oh, wow. the church, and yeah. yeah, and so like, whoa, he like hello, yeah. and so um, I think it just grows. So discernment grows. Yeah, discernment grows. You know, discernment is very closely connected to wisdom insight. We ask for it. James says, if you lack it, ask for it, right? Yep. If you don't know, Lord, help me to see this thing. Yeah. Lord, help me to understand what this is. And then we practice it. We we just, we get out there and we work with it, you know, and see what, and allow the Holy Spirit. The, the, the problem I have with people is this, and a lot of these questions, I mean, mm-hmm. not problem, that sounds harsh, but <laughs> but the struggle that I have yes. is a lot of people are like, well, why didn't God just, mm-hmm. and why don't God just, and why didn't God just, and why do I have to, eat? you know what I mean? And I'm like, yeah. Like you have to understand, God um, guides those people in motion, like you would guide a car in motion. You know, I know we all have power steering, and you can you know take a finger and move the wheel around at any point. But there used to be a day without power steering, where when the car was stationary, mm. to try to turn the wheel, it it was it was literally impossible. Yeah. To go anywhere. Yeah. What you needed was a little, just slightest amount of motion, mm. and God could then guide that. And so I think there's something to that as it relates to um, how we follow God. We yeah. are being led. Yeah. You know, we're not, it's not like a spiritual stationary, it's a spiritual journey. Yeah. And, you know, the sheep, the shepherd, follow me. And yeah. so I'll guide you. And, and we struggle with that because we're like, no, 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 I want to know all the answers. And so I go to Abraham and, you know, uh, Genesis 12 and get up and go to a place that I'll show you. Yeah. He had to get up and go for mm. God to show him yeah. where he needed to go. Yeah. He had no idea. Like, he said, just leave everything as comfortable mm. and follow me. Mm. And, and leave your family, you know, your, your, your nation, yeah. your comfort, yeah. and just take your family, pack it up, and go. So that means the next day he got up and he's like, I feel like we just need to go this way. And if he was 10 degrees off, then the Lord would have directed him to the right place. He got him there. Right. And that was the same thing every day. He got up, did the same thing, yeah. you know, until God gave him more revelation of like, this is the land, this is where I'm taking you. Yeah. And so I just think I think we have to just we have to grow in this. Um, and the more that the, the, I think a humble heart is so important because yeah. your pride won't let you do that because yeah. your pride doesn't want you to fail or look silly or you know what I mean. It goes back to that control. It, it, it does. Control. We are yeah. we are really about control that's yeah. connected to pride and connected to fear and all these things. And um, so when people go like, well, why didn't God just? And I'm like, because he didn't. Mm-hmm. That's God has a, a, a way and a thought, and he didn't. So that's like my kids ask me, well, why didn't you just? I'm like, because I didn't. 
You know what I mean? Because in that moment, this is what I wanted to do. This is what I thought to do. We just trust that God's ways are perfect. Yeah. You know, and we go, okay, well, I don't understand it, but you did it that way. Right. But he's going to lead us. He's, we got to follow that. So we develop discernment. It grows. You don't just like have yeah. it. Like, yeah. boom, boom, I, you know, um, I just have discernment. I think people like, you could have the gift. Now there's a difference between discernment and the discerning of spirits, which is a spiritual gift. Mm. And the discerning of spirits is to know whether something, go back to that, mm-hmm. um, to go back to that question about like whether right. it's demonic or spiritual. Um, it literally is for you being able to say, this is of God and this is not. Right. That's what the discerning of spirits is for. This is, yeah. a, this is a, a godly, this is the Holy Spirit, this is, this is a demonic spirit. Yeah. And, uh, and so there's a gift for that. But that's different. It, it can function very similarly, I think, in some ways, but it's different than daily discernment, wisdom, insight right. that James tells us to ask for. That actually um, Solomon asked for, which is actually, I preached a whole series on the hearing heart, which right. is actually what wisdom where wisdom comes. I am listening to you, Lord. A lot of people just live their lives not listening ever and then mm-hmm. wonder why God never leads them. Yeah. And the whole time, like God's like, hey, 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 I'm trying to lead you, and you're completely oblivious to it. Yeah. So we have some work to do on our end of like tuning in, yeah. listening, and then stepping out, letting him guide us, humble, letting go of pride, that sort of thing yeah. as we go into it. So let's uh let's Let's tickle the ear of the people asking <laughs> the uh, oh, the out there questions. Okay, let's Specifically, go out there. Um, where yeah. was Lazarus when he was dead? That was a, quite a theme yeah. of what was going on. And you talked about yep. the Jewish traditional belief of yep. what was happening with the spirit. Yeah. So when Lazarus was dead, but not dead, dead. Yeah. Well, he was dead. He was I mean, dead. that was that's. I don't think that was real. Yes, but for I mean, sure. he was dead. Um, so here's the thing. Um, I'm not an expert in this, yeah. so I, I I dabble, and so there are people out there probably know more than I do in this regard. So don't don't whatever. But my understanding, and you see this in a, I'm taking this from scripture. I'm not just like, well, I heard, mm-hmm. I googled it. You know, um, there is there is an an idea pre, um, you know, and again, this is where I'm 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 shady. I'm, I'm gray on this, but there's an idea of what was called Abraham's bosom or paradise. Yeah. Um, and I want this to get confused with like a purgatory. That's not what it is. Um, it's very clear that like hell, Gehenna, is a holding place until the lake of fire. I mean, you can see that very clearly in scripture. Yeah. Um, and so uh, as we look at the New Testament, here's what we see. To be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord for the believer. That's that's clear. Like if I'm dead, I'm, w- I'm in the presence of God. Yeah. Um, and so do I believe that I'm in heaven? A- absolutely. I think so. Now, it, was there an Abraham's bosom? Is there a place that pre-Jesus, you know, while yeah. all of these people are honoring God and following God? And, you know, I think it's probably the same, but maybe by different names. Again, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not definitive on it. There's probably, you could find people better suited to answer that question. But I would say this, what I see of Scripture in that, in that element, uh, Lazarus was in the New Testament, you know, right at the cusp of the New Testament. Um, he would have been, because I'll get a little, let's, let's go a little it. deeper into yeah, this thing. You know, Scripture says, um, how shall we say, I think see, Ephesians, maybe, maybe Thessalonians, um, how shall we say that he ascended Jesus unless we say he, un, unless we understand he descended into the, in, into basically the, the lower places and preached the gospel. So I, I believe that Jesus went down. We talk about getting the the keys of the gates, yeah. the keys to the keys of death and hell and the grave. Yes, I think he got that. But I think at the same time he was there, going, "I am the Messiah." If you put your just like what he was doing, if you put your belief in me, that these people could respond to Jesus, and yeah. then that's why we saw people up coming up out of the ground, right. five hundred people walking around to Jesus' resurrection. Yeah, because like it affected all of the the otherly worlds that were happening at that yeah. point. So um, there was something that happened that that transitioned all this, but um, I would just say this simply. I mean, I believe he would have been in paradise uh, in the presence of God. Is that different than today? I, I don't know. I mean, because even in heaven, it talks about it's a holding place until a new heaven. Yeah. So there's a development of, of sort of that idea in yeah. Scripture uh, that there are separate places. You're not just floating around. I don't believe in ghosts. Let me tell you what I don't believe. That'll yeah. help. Don't believe in ghosts. Don't yeah. believe that ghosts are often, often just demonic activity. They know you. They read you. They know names. They know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, 
So what we're seeing a lot of times in, in what people are calling paranormal, same thing we talk about UFOs, it's really, you know, it's inter-spiritual, not interdimensional, yeah. or it's interdimensional, not intergalactic. Um, and so um, a lot of that is attributed very, very easily to the spiritual activity, demonic activity. Yeah. So I, I would just say, um, you know, it's, you're not floating around. You're not just waiting around. You're, you know, I know there are people talk about like when they die, they can see their bodies. And I don't, I don't disagree with that. I think that there's a transition. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if that's the way it is for everybody. You know, yeah. sometimes you might just wake up and you're there. Um, but I think you're either in the presence of God or not. Yep. You know, and so I think with Lazarus, he, he was as a follower, as a devout Jewish person, a follower of Jesus, even um, that he was in the presence of God. I can hear people really excited that we answered that question. Today. <laughs> well, I don't know if I answered it. I gave my answer yes. at least or my very surface level, but you could dig into it and, yeah. and study some of that things. Now that you have some thoughts and because there's stories where Jesus tells the story of the rich man going to Abraham's bosom and seeing hmm. the beggar, you yeah. know, but he, there's a fixed chasm between the two and he can't go there and yeah. you can't return. And that kind of gives you some indication. Ghosts aren't coming back. Like he's like, you can't go back because he begged to go back. He's like, let me go back and tell my brother. He's like, if they don't believe the law and the prophets, they're not going to believe you, mm. which is absolutely true. It's what yeah. we have today. People have the word of God and they just discredit it. But like I saw my ghost came to me and told me this. And so um, scripture, yeah. once again, is just proven accurate and correct in terms of how it reads people. So, yeah. Well. As always, <laughs> thank you I'm so for glad we we got out there. A really cool podcast yeah. today. Yeah, um, um, that's that's what makes cool. Yeah. Uh, but thanks for hanging out in the green room. Uh, as always, leave a comment. Uh, let us know what's helpful to you, yeah. and ask more questions. We'll take questions from anywhere. And uh, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube. Um, it just helps us reach more people with this yeah. stuff, and that's really what we're trying to do. And hopefully, uh, give you some practical. Um, insight into how to implement what's happening on Sundays, what's being spoken on Sundays and using it in your life Monday through Saturday. So hopefully it's helpful. Uh, We love you and we'll see you next week in the green room.